At this time, I am honored to introduce our next guest, the CEO and co-founder of With Honor. He is the son of a Vietnam veteran who left the Marines as the captain after receiving a Bronze Star Medal and a Purple Heart. He grew up in Rhode Island and attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill on a Marine Corps and Naval ROTC scholarship. In 2009, he graduated from Harvard with an MPA and an MBA. He served five years in the Marine Corps, where he attained the rank of captain and deployed to Bosnia, the Horn of Africa, and Iraq. During his service, ABC World News named him Person of the Year in 2006 for his work in Kibera and military service in Iraq. He's also the author of the memoir, It Happened on the Way to War, which covers the relationship between war fighting and peacemaking. He also wrote, he also wrote War Letters, Extraordinary Correspondence from American Wars. In 2017, he co-founded With Honor, a cross a cross-partisan movement led by veterans focused on promoting and advancing principled veteran leadership to reduce, to reduce polarization. Without further ado, it is my distinct honor to introduce Ry Barcott. Good morning, Legion. How are you? Should we start off with a um, Marine Corps Daily 7 just to get, uh, get our blood flowing? How about that? Neck rolls after me. I'll count the cadence. One, two, three, four. Ah, yeah. How's that feel? Good? Hey, I really appreciate that introduction. I really appreciate the mention of my father. I lost him last year. He would have been very uh, pleased to know about uh, participating here with you all. I'm happy to be a lifelong, uh, in a, a life member of the Legion. Uh, my father taught me a lot, including the value of service. And, uh, and God bless him and all of our Vietnam vets here. We appreciate you. I also appreciate hearing uh, Gen General Don Bacon, now U.S. Representative Don Bacon, speak a little bit beforehand. My organization, with honor, uh, which has been a great partner with the Legion, is focused on tackling what I think is maybe the largest problem that we face, at least in this town, if not our country, which is the polarization and dysfunction of our Congress. We've heard a little bit about that. We know a little bit about that. So what we've done at organizationally is we've helped support, uh, recruit, train, elect principled veterans like Don who have taken a pledge to serve across party lines and serve with integrity, civility, and courage. We're a small team. We've been around for about five years. We've helped support about 30 members now who participate in the four country caucus, this bipartisan caucus that uh, Representative Bacon and Representative Jimmy Panetta uh, established uh, four, Congre four years ago. That, ca that caucus has now passed over 79 laws in national security, national service, and veterans affairs, and we've teamed up with the Legion on many of those, uh, those priorities, and we'll continue to, to do so. Uh, you know, as veterans here, it's no surprise, you all know these numbers, but it's important to, to reinforce them. It's important to tell others that don't quite recognize this, that not long ago, Congress used to be about 70% veterans. Now, we're right around the 20% mark. Uh, for the first time this last cycle, that number actually went up a bit, and we're pleased to, that that happened, and we're pleased to be a small part of that. But why does that matter? Obviously, it matters because it is a common bond. It is service. And if you're going to run again, or you're going to want to ser serve again, you, want, you need to have a service mentality in this type of work, especially if you're going to be committed to actually getting things done, being a workhorse like Congressman Don Bacon, like Congressman Jimmy Panetta, and others, these 30 members, and not a show horse that just picks the latest culture battle, throw a bomb, go raise small dollars off of it. Might be good for you. It's not good for the United States of America. I had an interesting moment. I, I'm new to this. I, I, after the Marine Corps, I served in Iraq uh, with General Berger. He was my regimental commander. And got out was able to pursue part of the American dream, 
thanks to having great parents like my father and mother, built a business with another Marine, sold part of that business, and then started with honor. I hadn't had any experience on the, on the political side, and we had our annual conference. I know you all are getting ready to have your uh, annual conference in my hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm looking forward to welcoming you all in, uh, in August. But we had our annual conference, and at this annual conference we had some folks, we were at the Army-Navy Country Club, and uh, somebody came up to me and said, oh, it's, it, it, it sounds like you all do some, some uh, lobbying, some advocacy, in addition to the, the, to the work that you do to help recruit and train veterans. Um, what's your special interest? So what do you mean? What's our special interest? Our special interest is the United States of America. That's what our special interest is. And that's what your special interest is. And that's why I'm proud to be a lifelong legionnaire and now and be partnered with you in this important work to move our country together. And let me give you some tangible examples. One that I'm really proud of, and we heard from Congressman Blumenauer a moment ago, is the Afghan Adjustment Act. Our linguists, whether it was in Afghanistan or Iraq, were in the most dangerous jobs next to EOD, our brave EOD guys. Explosive ordnance disposal. In terms of casualties and kill, killed in action, our linguists had the highest casualty rates. They were our partners. It was a debacle getting out of Afghanistan. We got some out. Now many of them are in a legal limbo. That's not right. That's not right, and this is a way to adjust it. And by the way, it's good for, for the United States of America. It's good for our economy. All right. So we're going to push on that. We're going to get that thing done, God willing, this year. Uh, and we heard about lots of, other, lots of other important initiatives. One that I want to just flag for you all right now is uh, the uh, Captain James C. Edge, uh, Gold Spouse Equity Act. I really, this one speaks to me personally because I was in the same unit. I did not know him as Captain Edge when he was killed in action in Ramadi. He was 31 years old, company commander, serving for General Berger, who was then the commanding officer of 5th Marines. I want to read to you something his father wrote after he was killed in action. He said, my son wanted to be a part of it, one who made decisions. He was an action guy, and he didn't want to be in the back row wondering what was going on in the front. So he went to the front and he made the ultimate sacrifice. And he had two daughters, age three and seven. Imagine that. And his spouse is now told by the U.S. government, because she got remarried, that they're going to cut the survivor benefits. They're not many, but why do it? Some arbitrary governmental decision. Well, we can fix that. And we owe that to our sacred war dead and their dependents. And that's an issue that has bipartisan support, and that's an issue that we'll continue to work and get done, God willing, this year with you, our brethren legionnaires. It is great to be here with you. Uh, please, uh, let's continue to work together. Please uh, support the representatives that are the workhorses, that are part of the Four Country Caucus, like Congressman Don Bacon, Congressman Jimmy Panetta, the two co-chairs for the, for the Four Country Caucus this year will be together for a reception this evening after the Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the U.S. and the CCP, which is led by a Four Country Caucus member, Mike Gallagher. The two caucus co-chairs this year are Congressman Jason Crow and Tony Gonzalez. They have trust, real trust across party lines that you don't see a lot in this town. And that is the building block to getting anything done. The vice chairs, Congresswoman Marionette Miller-Meeks and Mikey Sherrill, they trust each other. They talk together. And that's the building block that is so broken down in this town. That's what we're doing something about. Legionnaires, thank you. Keep at it. God bless.